There's a novella by Italo Calvino called The Baron in the Trees. The story begins when a boy won't eat his dinner. In fact, he gets so fed up with family life that he walks out of the house and climbs a tree. His brother narrates the story. Cosimo climbed up to the fork of a big branch where he could settle comfortably and sat himself down there, his legs dangling, arms crossed. From the tree, Cosimo looked out at the world. Everything seen from up there was different. The middle distance was dark with olive trees and down on the port he could just see the tops of battlements, then the sea. Our father leant out of the window. When you're tired of being up there, you'll change your ideas. I'll never change my ideas, exclaimed my brother from the branch. You'll see as soon as you come down. Then I'll never come down. Cosimo keeps his word and lives in the trees for the rest of his life. In the middle of the forest the trees stood And the beech knew the birch was there And the mountain ash breathed the same air as the sycamore In the middle of the forest the trees stood And the beech knew the birch was there And the mountain ash breathed the same air as the sycamore and everywhere the wind blew The trees understood each other And everywhere the wind blew The trees understood each other And the trees knew each other's secrets And the trees knew each other's secrets In the deep green, green heart of the forest and the trees knew each other's secrets and the trees knew each other's secrets in the deep green green heart of the forest And everywhere the wind blew The trees understood each other And everywhere the wind blew The trees understood each other And the trees knew each other's secrets And the trees knew each other's secrets In the deep green green heart of the forest. In a project organised by the National Park Authority, more than a hundred pieces of graffiti carved into trees have recently been catalogued by walkers in the New Forest. Which marks to ward off evil? King's marks, arrowhead shapes tagging trees to be cut down for warships, and, of course, lovers' initials. Lovers have always cut their names in the bark of trees, but there's only one known instance of poetry killing a tree. On Whitnam Clumps in 1844, Joseph Tubb carved a poem round an old beech tree. The tree died a hundred years later, at least partly due to the expanding perforations in its bark. It was felled and cut into logs, but left out on the hill. To this day, pieces of the broken poem tree still lie around on the clumps, 
A word here, a word there, like giant scrabble. It was a spring morning, and Mary said to me, There are gods in the Mirabelle tree. What she'd actually said was, There are buds in the Mirabelle tree. But I had misheard her. As if they were waiting for a world to begin. As if they were waiting for a world to begin and had gathered for the view, plum position here on our lawn. God, she had said, there are gods on the Mirabelle tree. It was early, I was wrestling on a sock, but the way she said it, more breath than voice, made me join her there at the curtain. Kids, I thought, sitting in the branches, thumbing their phones. But I looked again, instead of some other Monday's finches flicking and flitting in the leaves. It was them. They had settled here. A stillness, a grace of them. Small, I said. It's small for gods. The Binox, she said though I'd already grabbed our battered copy of the Godspotter's Guide. There was Hathor, Lady of the Sycamore, bouncing on a low limb. Then dog-headed Pengu, his arm around a dryad. And Tapio, tiaraed with a fresh, Finnish fir branch. And Nangtani and Jinmenju, a gallery of sprites and fays from the Arboreal, and there at the top, like the Christmas fairy, Baltic Laoma. I could have sworn she waved. Who could imagine a humble plum supporting such godhood? And yet, we had expected it, were prepared. Where else would they gather for this convention? And when, if not now, as the earth tilts like an upturned table, and the silvery ones from undiscovered stars prepare to descend. The Newbury Bypass, built between 1996 and 1998, was designed to connect a major arterial route linking the south coast to the Midlands and the north. 360 acres of land and 120 acres of old growth woodland were cleared to make way for the bypass, with the felling of 10,000 mature trees. Around 7,000 people demonstrated on the site of the bypass route. 800 arrests were made over the course of the clearances. She's put together a protest bag for me. A multi-pack of peak Freens biscuits, plasters, a Swiss army knife, fire lighters, a very tatty photocopy of a list called 198 methods of NVDA, non-violent direct action, stained with mud and cup rings. Four blister packs of paracetamol, five tins of baked beans, five tins of mushroom soup, and what she describes as her greenham scarf, which she tells me she hasn't washed since she left the peace camp 10 years ago. It has a strange, heady smell wood smoke, mildew and patchouli. We set off in the afternoon and drive to Newbury through the Downs, along the A34. She pulls up on a lay-by. I'll leave you here, love. She points to the glow of a campfire in a copse across the fields. She kisses me and strokes my cheek. 
Think of it as resisting rather than fighting. And don't feel you have to swear. And sing loudly. Remember, do whatever you do loudly. You're much stronger than you think you are. She drives off. I hoik my rucksack onto my back and start walking across the fields towards the sound of hammering, dogs barking and a penny whistle. My aspens dear, whose airy cage is quelled, quelled or quenched in leaves of the leaping sun. All felled, felled are all felled, all the fresh and following folded rank Not spared, not one That dandled a sandaled Shadow that swam or sank On meadow and river And wind-wandering weed-winding bank Oh, if we but knew what we do when we delve Country is so tender to touch a being so slender that, like this sleek and seeing ball, but a prick will make no eye at all. Where we, even when we mean to mend her, we end her when we hew or delve. After comers cannot kiss the beauty be Ten or twelve, only ten or twelve Strokes of havoc on cell The sweet especial sea Rural sea A rural sea Sweet especial Branching out, the trunk road, out of the woods, going back to your roots, can't see the wood for the trees, all the words and phrases that trees give us, turning over a new leaf, out on a limb, log jam, getting to the root of the matter, dead wood, chip off the old block, barking at the wrong tree. Testimony of James Shaw from Leeds Tree Care, a tree surgery firm based in Headingley. Trees are outside our time scale. They just are, parts of the furniture of the world. Trees are givers. They take very little and give so much. And they keep on giving after they die. Warmth, building, paper. Sometimes a customer will say, oh and take that tree down will you? 
almost on a whim. Sometimes you do ask questions like, why do you want it down? Other times you just have to walk away. Planting's the best part of the job. Having the soil in your hands and knowing that what you're sticking in the ground may well outlive you, become a habitat for so many other living things. And there's so much science now about how trees communicate underground, how they work in community, manage a woodland sustainably, and the woodland responds. A woodland becomes richer and more diverse the better we manage it. I love my work. A woodland working in harmony with us. I like that. Woodman, ere you make a stroke against this unoffending oak, think if there be no other way, and let the noble fellow stay. But if by hard necessity you are compelled to fell a tree, then go perform an act of grace And plant another in its place Pause, Whitman, ere you make a stroke Against this unoffending oak Think if there be no other way and let the noble fellow stay But if by our necessity You are compelled to fell a tree Then go perform an act of grace And plant another in its place place to hide out. Robin Hood and his merry band of outlaws. The court in As You Like It. A place where adventures happen. The boys in Brendan Chase who run away to live in the woods. A place where madness and passion are engendered. A midsummer night's dream. Woods are a place to get lost in. Like the narrator in Dante's Inferno. In the middle of the journey of my life, I found myself in a dark wood where the straight road had been lost. But woods are where, in being lost, like Hansel and Gretel, you discover your strength and yourself, find your way home. We are trees. In times of grief or scarcity, we shed our leaves. When renewal starts, we blossom. Begin again.
loveliest of trees, the cherry now is hung with blooms along the bough and stands about the woodland right, wearing white for Easter time. Cherry now along the bough, a woodland ride is to time. Now of my three score years and ten, twenty will not come again. And take from seventy springs a score It only leaves me fifty more Cherry now along the bow A woodland ride is to time Years and ten come again Springs a score Strong resistance from the people of Sheffield has saved over 11,000 of 17,000 threatened trees in the city. But still, 6,000 street trees have been cut down, 
in the last five years. Heartwood, a poem by Robert McFarlane. Would you hew me to the heartwood, Cutter? Would you leave me open-hearted? Put an ear to my bark, Cutter. Hear my saps mutter. Mark my heartwood's beat, my leaves flutter. Would you turn me to timber, Cutter? Leave me nothing but a heap of logs, a pile of brash. I am a world cutter. I am a maker of life, drinker of rain, breaker of rocks, caster of shade, eater of sun. I am timekeeper, breath giver, deep thinker cutter. I am a city of butterflies, a country of creatures. But my world takes years to grow, Cutter, and seconds to crash. Your saw can fell me, your axe can bring me low. Do you hear these words I utter? I ask this of you. Have you, Heartwood, Cutter? Have those who sent you. Chico Mendes comes from a long line of rubber tappers deep in the forest of Acre, Brazil. Chico sees the wealthy ranchers buying up the forest, burning it down for cattle pasture. Chico learns to read, aged 18, becomes an activist and a literacy teacher. Chico's fight to save his people's livelihood is noted by the wealthy cattle ranchers. Chico! Chico forms the Rural Workers' Union and the Rubber Tappers' Union. Chico talks about cooperative systems to cultivate a broader forest harvest for everyone. Chico goes to Washington DC, addresses the World Bank, the US Congress. Chico is famous, pleading for the indigenous people of the rainforest, the way of life and the wildlife of the rainforest. Chico!
first, I thought I was fighting to save the rubber trees, said Chico. Then I thought I was fighting to save the rainforest. Now I know I'm fighting to save humanity. Dali Alves da Silva, a man with money, buys the rubber reserve of Cachoeira, where Chico's family live. Chico's campaign to stop the logging leads to the creation of a reserve and the arrest of Alves da Silva. On the evening of December 22nd, 1988, Chico is playing dominoes with two policemen paid to protect him when a single bullet fired by Darcy, son of Dali Alves da Silva, kills him in front of his family. The Chico. In 2017 and 2018, deforestation increases by 30%, forest fires by 80%. Nevertheless, Chico Mendes is remembered and revered throughout the world. Think of it as resisting rather than fighting. Resisting, hoping hoping the rope won't snap and the harness will hold, the clips won't buckle, trusting the police won't trample you down with their horses, trusting the bailiffs won't cut the walkway with you on it. They arrive at 8am, that awful caravan of security guards in their day-glow jackets and police and chainsaw operators. They start with words try to talk you down as the tree surgeons lop off the branches below you. If that doesn't work, they send up the bailiffs in a cherry picker. If the bailiffs can't get you down, they send up the hired climbers. Rumour has it they have tricks. They know about pressure points and the science of holding on, the science of clutching and clinging, the science of balance. Rumour has it they're paid £500 a day. I don't want to hurt you, love, so I'm going to ask you very nicely to come down. He's right next to me now. You do realise the longer I'm up here trying to get you down, the more I get paid. Silver bark of beech and sallow Bark of yellow birch and yellow Twig of willow, twig of willow. Stripe of green in moosewood maple, colour seen in leaf of apple. Bark of popple, bark of popple. Tall and yellow, twig of willow, twig of willow, silver bark of beech and sallow, black. 
of yellow, birch and yellow, twig of willow, twig of willow, twig of I start asking him questions. I tell him about Odin. I tell him about Oak Gall Inc. I tell him how leaves filter our poisons and stop the stars from falling. I tell him about the Judas tree and I call him Judas and ask him if he ever has nightmares about tarmac being poured down his throat or his wife and children being buried alive beneath asphalt. Look, love. He says, I've been very reasonable with you, so far. And he lunges forward, gets me in a headlock and starts to pull. The 13th century Persian poet Rumi wrote, Love is a tree with branches in forever, with roots in eternity. The Newbury Bypass was finally completed in November 1998. The clearances cost two police forces a total of £5 million, with an extra sum spent on private security guards. Most of the aggregate used in the bypass was taken from the broken up main runway at the decommissioned Greenham Common RAF base. Sing loudly. Analysis since the construction of the bypass has shown that instead of the predicted 47% reduction in road deaths due to the new road, there was a 67% increase in deaths in the first five years. The same report concluded that traffic levels on the old roads had not decreased as expected. Sing loudly. Remember, do whatever you do loudly. As a result of the protests and the nationwide attention they drew in the media, 600 road projects planned by the then Conservative government were reduced to 150. Many protest methods employed today were pioneered at Newbury. In Sheffield, thanks to the successful campaign, a joint street tree management strategy will now ensure the future of Sheffield's street trees. Think of it as resisting rather than fighting. You're much stronger than you think you are. Once I met a tree, a yew planted in Cadman's century, walked its span, conjuring stories held in the dark scope of its memory, then lived a while and forgot about the tree, till years later, back in the same southern county, staying in a borrowed house, writing earnestly. A storm had blown, a man outside was clearing debris. Famous writer, he said. Proper one, lives nearby. I knew the name from school. Drama in verse set in history. Full of cock, I knocked at his door, invited myself for tea. The old man humoured his visitor, showed me his desk in the study and talked. The craft of writing, life. Mortality. Listened to, was gracious. Perhaps he was lonely. I told him I was writing and gave him a draft of my play. He read it, liked it, 
people said he did, commented kindly, and gave me his new one. Cadman, it was called, father of English poetry. Driving home, I passed through the village of the ancient yew tree, parked up, glimpsing the shavings, the trunk sawn brutally. Down, blown down in the storm, they told me. I stood for a while, then hacked a branch from the ruin of its body and sent to the playwright a sprig from the yew seeded in Cadman's century. Alive still, I wrote, and for planting a crooked line of English poetry. Stand away. 